at the agenda for today. Um, WMS uh, has seen quite a few serious improvements. Uh, NetSuite has, has uh, put a lot of time and effort in, uh, in uh, sort of revamping uh, WMS. Um, there's a renewed user, inter user interface. There's wave picking functionality now. Um, we can do multi-order picking where you um, uh, beforehand needed actual picking lists with barcodes to do multi-order picking, but it's now all embedded um, in WMS and you can post those via, via the scanner. And uh, as uh, in the new version, it's possible to process inbound shipments that's completely or fully integrated into WMS uh, as from 2020.1. So the renewed, renewed user interface. Um, these are the main improvements that have been uh, um, developed and released. Better use of flows. It's more intuitive if you look at all the different flows, inbound, outbound, um, the inventory flows. Um, as mentioned, it, it's, it's more intuitive and it's more, more logical um, uh, looking at the setup. Improved performance, mainly because a lot of the fields and records um, that used to sit on the WMS platform have been moved to the NetSuite core, which makes it, obviously makes it faster, um, but also uh, links into the next point, uh, configurability and customizability. Because these fields and records were moved to the core, you can access them via the NetSuite UI and do your customizations and configurations there, which I will show you in the, in the live demo. Then there's a new side menu on the scanner, which is always available and makes the navigation quite, uh, quite handy. And there's an info screen. Again, I'll, uh, uh, I'll, I'll show you some more details later on. To give you an idea of what it looks like on the actual scanner before moving um, to my live demo in NetSuite itself, um, which I will do on full screen. This is what this is the, the first few steps of an inbound process where you where you see the main menu, um, the um, inbound and outbound processes, and an actual um, first um, screen within the process. Just to give you a bit of a feel of what it looks like on an actual handheld. Now, when I move um, to NetSuite, now on the um, uh, on the interface, I will move to the actual mobile app. As you can see, this is full screen. Um, I begin a new session. I can select a warehouse. I can actually uh, um, select two in my, in my case. Uh, this is my, um, my main menu. Um, I can go into receiving, for example, and go to purchase orders. Um, I can select a field from this. Now, there's a few things uh, that are new in the interface. First of all, I have my column picker, so I can actually add columns as I, uh, um, if, if I would like to. And all settings are, um, um, are stored on the user basis, so the next time you log in, you'll have your own um, setup um, column-wise, which is, is, is very handy. If I open up a PO, You can see that the info screen that I mentioned um, can be found here on the right, uh, right hand corner, the top, top right hand corner. If I click it or tap it, if you're working with a scanner, it actually gives me additional information on the PO. So it gives me, in this case, it gives me the vendor and the PO number. I can close it down again. If I go into the item where I would normally start receiving, I have this info screen as well. And it gives me information about the item with, a, with, a, with an image uh, and some additional information. So to avoid um, a lot of clutter on the scanner itself, because um, you know, in, the, in the past we were trying to, um, uh, to put as much information, as much useful information as possible on the scanner itself, on, on this, this one screen, um, which makes it, uh, uh, which could make it a bit messy. But by moving uh, any stuff that could be interesting, like an item image or other uh, information, to a separate screen, um, we can keep this really nice and uh, nice and clean. That's uh, that's uh, quite a, um, a major major improvement. Now, um, if I talk about configurability, uh, configurability and uh, and customizability, um, if I go to my main menu and I go to receiving, now here are my different processes: so my inbound processes, outbound processes, um, picking. 
um, I can tailor make tailor make all these uh, these processes. Now, how do I do this? I go into NetSuite. I open up a list of WMS processes, and this screen still a little bit technical. Um, if you look at the naming conventions, but if you look at the names of the processes, it does it does make sense because let's say you want to customize um, or configure your PO receiving process. This is PO receiving. You can actually go into the process itself and configure it. Now, if you go into this page, then on the right hand side, you can actually zoom into the page you want to uh, configure. Uh, and again, um, these make sense if you actually look at the uh, naming convention. Let's say I want to change um, the, the the page where you see the list of POs that we just looked, uh, looked at on the scanner. I can then choose an element on that particular page. Now, in this case, because I'm looking at a list of POs on my scanner, I only have a data table. And I can change the way um, the page behaves. Um, to give you a few examples, I can change the row size, for example. So the number of POs that is showing, I can actually manipulate that myself. I can use vi uh, visibility condition, um, which means that I can make it visible, yes or no, which is not a very good idea if you're looking at a list of tables, but you can imagine if you, if you have a field on your scanner, which you never use and you never populate, you just hide it um, to make it even cleaner and to avoid people trying to enter uh, stuff that they don't need to enter. Now, what happens if I change this? Um, let me go back to my, um, my scanner. So right now I see um, a pretty long list of POs, it's actually 10. Now if I save my mobile configuration, I'm actually changing the, the, the way the page looks. Now, if I would go back in, logging myself back in on the scanner. I go to my receiving and my POs. It only shows me three. So I've actually changed the way they behave. Now, um, what you can do, for example, uh, in this mobile configuration setting. Let's say I want to um, look at the items. This is where I select the item. And I have the text box, for example. This is the label of scanning. I use the label, uh, I can disable paste, but I can also for, um, um, for fields that are clickable, um, actually disable the click-through functionality which means that I can make sure that my, my pickers, for example, are forced to scan the items, are forced to scan the bins instead of being able to select them manually um, on the scanner, which is a very handy, uh, handy tool. And the last thing I want to say about this is um, you can actually um, go back to my processes. There's a, there's a button next to each process which says clone. So you could even clone um, a process and make it available on the scanner. In this case, you see that, that we have two different, two, two additional versions of PO receiving. So let's say you want to have a PO receiving process where um, your, uh, the people that are actually doing the inbound process or processing the POs um, are forced to scan whatever they need, to, uh, they need to enter. So they're forced to scan the, uh, the item, they're forced to scan the bins that, they, uh, that they're putting them away to. Um, but you have, let's say, a warehouse supervisor who has his own PO receiving process, and he is able to um, select anything manually. So he doesn't, he's not forced to scan, but he, he can uh, actually pick everything manually. But just, just a few examples of how configurable um, and customizable the processes and all the different pages are at the moment. Let me quickly switch back to my presentation. Um, wave picking functionality. 
Um, what does it result? Um, first of all, it, it's improved the performance and it reduces waiting time. And that's mainly because a lot of the um, uh, time consuming processes like creating item fulfillment, for example, that you would normally have to wait for, is all being done in the background. So the, uh, the person who's actually doing the picking does not wait and doesn't need to wait for those kinds of transactions to be processed, but it's all being done in the background. So you can just keep on picking, take the next order, and Netflix does all the processing in the background. Um, it's a tailor-made process, which I will um, show my live demo as well. So you can really um, um, change the way these, um, uh, the, the, the way you want to create these waves and how you want to relieve, release your set, set of orders um, to your warehouse can be, um, uh, can be fully customized. And because of that, it, it, it's easily um, scalable with increased volumes. If you have multiple locations, for example, you can really um, um, customize your, uh, your wave picking to make sure that the, the process fits the way your, uh, your warehouse works. Because in one warehouse, you might have different um, picking zones. In another warehouse, you don't have different picking zones. In one warehouse, you've got everything labeled. If you look at your bins and another warehouse, you may not have labeled everything. Um, so you have different types of processes and you can all customize that via um, both your, um, uh, the way your wave picking is set up and the, and the customization that I just showed you in the, um, um, in the interface. Now, to give you an idea of how that wave picking works um, in NetSuite, I'm actually going to go in and create a wave. Uh, what a wave does, um, a wave basically means uh, a selection of orders um, or the lines which you want to release to the warehouse and which your pickers can process and actually um, get the items and process them in the different, in the various sales orders. So what you see here is a, is a screen to create that wave with um, a set of criteria and filters. Now, the nice thing is that you can actually create these templates yourself. This is a, uh, a default um, wave criteria template but I can make these myself and, for example, um, change the filters. As you can see, some of the filters disappear, filters that I don't want to use. I just take them out. Um, and behind this, this, um, this um, wave criteria form is actually a safe search, which I will also quickly show you. My wave template is nothing more than a safe search. See, so it's just a safe search. We change it into custom, and all the filters that we just looked at are listed in my safe search. So it works as any safe search that you're uh, that you're um, um, uh, assumably um, are used to. And you can put in fixed criteria as well. So let's say you have um, two waves that you want to um, create every day um, per, let's say, um, carrier. You can actually predefine your criteria. And with one push of the button, you can create your wave and release the orders that match those criteria um, uh, to your warehouse. And I'm back to my wave. Um, I'm creating a wave for this location, which is my, uh, my default. I'm obviously um, want to create a wave for sales orders. I'm only going to put in a, very, a, a few um, filters. I want the orders which are shippable today or due, or due for, for shipment today. So the 25th, and I'm going to um, select a carrier. Um, I'm going to, I want to create a wave with orders which are due uh, for shipment today and which will be um, sent by UPS. I click search. And it looks for all the sales orders matching my criteria and my filters.
Uh, it finds one order. Um, so to keep it simple, with, uh, with one order in this wave, um, I can select my orders, my list of orders, um, deselect one or more if I, if I want to keep them out. Um, and I can choose whether I want to do single order picking or multiple order picking. I'll show you multiple order picking in the, in the next wave. Um, in this case, I want single order picking because I want the people in the warehouse to pick order by order. So what happens if I save this one? Um, to show you what happens, I'm, I'm going to um, save it with status pending release so I can see what happens. So it creates my wave. And I can see which order was selected, which we saw in the previous screen. I can see the line items. Uh, the order has two line items with these items in it. And um, pick tasks were created, were created. And these pick tasks are actually the tasks that come up on the scanner and allow the picker to actually process the sales orders. Now, what I could do, um, which is optional, is actually assign these pick tasks to very specific um, pickers. Uh, in this case, that's a default. They're not assigned. But I could say, OK, I want this wave or um, a selection of orders for a particular customer, for example, because I could put a filter in for customers as well. I want to assign these orders I didn't go well. I'm selecting Allison as a picker. Select my orders, my pick tasks, and I assign them. As you can see, the assigned picker changes. And I can save my wave, and that means that only this person is able to pick these particular sales orders. I'm going to change it back to not assigned. And I'm going to release my wave and not assign means that any picker which has the permission to pick sales orders in that particular in the location for which i've created the wave can actually start picking now, going back to my scanner um yeah one thing about the um, main menu i mentioned that there's a side menu available which is this one which is new as well from this one you can actually uh, easily go back to your main menu without having to exit out of different um, pages. Um, you can select a different warehouse and you can search your inventory. I'll quickly show you how that works. Let's say I want to, um, um, I'm, I'm in my warehouse, uh, I'm in front of a bin and um, there's only a couple of items in the bin and I was expecting more. I want to zoom in on those. Um, I type in the first few um, letters of the item. I open it up. And I can see exactly where uh, my item is, in which bins, what the quantities are, and what the inventory status is. So it's very easy to, to, to basically just zoom in on your inventory on item level from your scanner. I'm going back to my main menu. So we were looking at wave picking, which is obviously picking process. And I'm going to single order picking. So I need to select the sales order. And my sales order that's included in the wave that I've just created comes up and I can start picking. So it now actually comes up with the pick task. As you can see, I've got two pick tasks here. I've, I've got two items to pick. I select the pick task. Um, I can scan or enter the bin. Now I'm obviously clicking the bins, but as I mentioned before, we can disable that and make sure that the picker needs to scan the bin to make sure he's at the right place and he picks the right item. Um, I can show all the bins, so I can see in which bins this item is located. Um, this is my recommended bin, and um, there's a, a default um, order in which bins are, um, are actually presented. Uh, it's the uh, preferred bin of the item, and then there's some logic, standard logic behind it, which you can also um, configure yourself. So the way, the order in, in, in which the bins are, um, are presented and can be set up um, uh, by yourself. I'm actually picking from the recommended bin. I scan the item and I enter a quantity. And my customer wants to have one. I enter my quantity and I go to my next pick task. As you can see, this one is picked. This one was not picked yet. From that bin, that item. And I also want to pick one. 
Now, as you can see, my pick task is now complete. I cannot go to the next pick task because I don't have any pick tasks left. So my wave is complete. I've got all the, all the sales orders which were in my wave were picked. And I go to staging. Now, staging is mandatory. And what happens here is that I need to select a staging bin. And the staging bin is a bin uh, where my items are stored before they actually get shipped out to the customer. So what happens in the background, if I select my staging bin, in the background, Nets reprocess as a bin transfer. So it's now transferred out of the, um, the regular storage bins where my items were sitting, and it's moved everything into the storage bin. And that's to avoid other pickers, um, uh, just to make sure that your bin inventory is spot on uh, during your picking, picking process, because other people might be picking the same item, and they obviously want to see real-time uh, quantities in the, right, uh, in the right storage bin. Basically, that's all to it. So now I've picked my order. If I go back to my sales orders, And I view my sales order A01, which was in a wave and which I've just picked. We'll see that in the background, two item fulfillments uh, were created. Um, and I can now um, mark my order as packed and I can mark my order as shipped. I'm not going to go into that because that's standard functionality in NetSuite. Um, but I've now completed my, uh, my picking process. Now, uh, on um, uh, multiple order picking, I'm actually going to create another wave just to show you how that works. Again, I'm not going to put in too many criteria. Um, I want my orders that are shipped at today. And in this case, I'm going to use another carrier. I'm going to search for orders that meet these criteria. And now I'm saying I want multiple orders. So I don't want my um, pickers to pick order by order, but I just want them to pick one item for all the orders which have um, um, items in it um, so that I can pick them all together but at the same time. Um, I'm going to release it straight away because I don't want to assign pickers manually, so I can save it, release the way straight away. I'll go back to my scanner. Go back to my main menu, click picking. And in this case, I want to start multi-order picking. So it comes up with the waves which were um, released to the warehouse for multiple order picking. I open the wave. And as you can see, two pick tasks were created, um, but not on an order level, but on item level. So if I now start picking, I want to pick this item for all the orders that, contains this, that contain this item. I scan the bin. I scan the item. As you can see, it actually states the sales order. So I've picked it for sales order 799, and I'm now picking it for sales order 800. I go to my next pick task, which is the second item, which I also picked from the recommended bin. That's my item. I enter my quantity, comes up with the second order, I enter my quantity here, and I'm done. So I've now picked two items across two different sales orders. And again, I need to stage it. I pick my staging bin, which you normally, you, often, you will often have only one staging bin for your unbound process. All the orders, uh, all, all the items in the orders in the wave 
were now transferred from their storage bin um, to the staging bin. And if I would now go back to my sales order, just to uh, give you an idea. It's created item fulfillment. And in the item fulfillment, we'll see that the inventory details were, were populated and it shows my staging bin. So as soon as I actually ship this order, um, it will take it out of the staging bin. That's the, um, um, the, the waste picking process. Now let me quickly switch back to my presentation. Inbound shipment integration. Um, within uh, or as per uh, uh, in the, in the 2020.1 uh, version, um, inbound shipments uh, have been fully integrated. Um, before this version, it was not possible to process inbound shipments at all with, the, uh, with your handheld, so through WMS. Um, what does that allow you to do? Uh, it obviously allows you to receive those inbound shipments on a mobile device, multiple purchase orders at once. Um, so you can have multiple purchase orders and one inbound shipment. Um, these purchase orders can even um, be from different suppliers. And if you would like to, you can actually receive an entire inbound shipment with only a few taps or scans on your mobile device. But you can actually post them really, really fast. Um, but I will uh, show you that in the live demo. Um, for those of you who have never used inbound shipments or are not aware, uh, uh, are not familiar with the functionality, an inbound shipment is actually, like I said, a collection of um, purchase orders uh, or purchase order lines. Um, and it provides far better visibility in your in-transit inventory. So if your supplier um, sends it overseas, for example, they, they usually inform you which POs or, PO, or, P, which PO or POs um, are put in the container and are, are, is going to be shipped. If you put that in in my shipment, you can keep track of it uh, and it allows easy um, um, receiving. And it also allows you, if you, um, uh, if you need it, um, to, uh, um, to transfer the ownership. So let's say, the inventory which is in the container uh, is actually yours as soon as it gets, uh, uh, as, as soon as it's on the boat. Then you can use that inbound shipment to, uh, um, to transfer the ownership and NetSuite will make a financial booking to account for that ownership. Uh, let me switch back to NetSuite. I'm actually going to create an inbound shipment. Um, just to show for, for those of you who are not familiar with the functionality, just to quickly show you how it works. I create an inbound shipment. I'll get to my uh, initial uh, screen. I can type in the external document number that my supplier uses. Then put in an expecting shipping date. I'm going to set it today. I can put in a vessel number, um, a bill of lading number. Um, as, as you're used to uh, uh, in NetSuite, this form is fully customizable as well. So if you need extra custom fields that you want to use to keep track of your inbound shipments, that can obviously be done. And I can add uh, multiple POs to the inbound shipment. Now, I can do that by just choosing my PO and then choosing the item, which is in the PO. This PO has two items. Um, but if you have multiple POs to enter, it's easier to use add PO items, which allows you to filter by vendor. I'm actually going to use Acom Business Solutions. And in this drop down menu, only the purchase orders um, from this supplier will be um, showing. I'm actually going to Select multiple, which is a lot, e a lot easier to uh, uh, so it's a lot easier to select these POs um, 
uh, with the first option that I showed you. As soon as I've selected my POs, it will come up with the POs underneath. I can expand the POs and I can see the items which are in there. So I can still deselect an item if I know that this one you know, has, has delay in shipment and will be delivered later on. I'm now just going to keep everything in. That's all I need to, to, uh, um, to create my inbound shipment. And as soon as it saves it, um, you can see that the status is to be shipped, which means that I cannot process it yet uh, on my mobile device, um, which can only be done if it's actually in transit. So as soon as my supplier has informed me that it's actually, uh, uh, it's actually being shipped, I mark my inbound shipment in transit, Status is changed to in transit, and it means it will be exposed um, for WMS, uh, and I'm able to actually receive it on my mobile device. So going back to my scanner, back to my main menu, I want to receive. So it's the in an inbound process, obviously. And as you can see, there's a, um, uh, a separate menu for inbound shipments. Now, there's a few things I can do here. Um, if your supplier has, has informed you what external reference number he is using and you've um, populated on the inbound shipment, you can enter the number here or you can scan it and it will come up with the correct inbound shipment, obviously. Um, I can select it from a list and I can find shipment by item. So let's say um, you have this inbound shipment sitting in your warehouse. Um, uh, you, you're, you're, you're missing a document uh, that should have come with it, so you cannot find uh, the external reference very quickly. You can also, but, but there is a box uh, on the pallet or in the container which actually uh, has a bar, an, an item barcode on it. You can find or scan the item. Uh, if I select the item, it will come up with all the inbound shipments um, which have this item in it. And if I can put some extra columns in there, can put the vessel number in there. So there's, there's different ways of actually finding the correct inbound shipment. In this case, um, I'm picking this one because the only inbound shipment which is um, uh, on the list. As you can see, it states my items. I can um, do it online level, so I can receive this particular item because you know it could be that I really want to check um, to see if there's actually ten in there. I can enter my quantity, and I need to select a bin. Now, in this case, uh, you can see it only comes up with staging bins. That's because in my settings, um, um, I've, I've, I've set, I, I've created the set, or I've, um, um, I've set the option that I always want to stage my incoming shipments, which means that I only get a, store, a stage bin here and not my final storage bins. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, so my final storage bins. Now, do, why do, you want, do I want to do this? I want to be able to um, very quickly receive a complete inbound shipment. And I cannot do that if I need to select all the, the storage bins for the items. Now, let me receive this particular line item individually. So I've got three left. But I have a button here. Again, this is optional to receive all. It's, a, it's, an, it's an actual permission. It's a system rule uh, specifically for WMS. So I've received one individually, but I can receive all, and I can do that for the full um, uh, shipment. So again, I'm picking my, uh, my stage bin, and it receives all the items in one go. And as you can see, it only says receive next shipment. So the complete inbound shipment was now received. And I can go back to my main menu. Now, if I go back to my inbound shipment, the one that I've just created and received, you'll obviously see that the items are received. So the first line was received individually, uh, and the other ones were, were received in one go. Now, if I go to one of my POs, It says a status pending bill, which makes sense. Um, 
And if I look at my related records, you can see that two item receipts were created um, for the individual items, uh, and they were moved into the staging bin. So from the staging bin, uh, at the latest stage, you can obviously move um, the items by processing a bin transfer. And it's just a matter of scanning the item, scanning the bin it needs to come from, and scanning the bin it needs to go to. So that's an additional step. If you choose um, um, to receive your complete inbound shipment in one go into a staging bin. Um, a few more remarks about the um, WMS reports. Um, there's a lot of um, reports that you can uh, that you can look at. Um, your your pick task list, which will be empty now because I've uh, I've got looked at one outstanding from the from the past but this will list um, all your uh, open pick tasks that you can filter on so you have a really good insight of what's happening how many uh, quantities uh, would need to be picked how many are remaining there's a lot of reporting uh, around inventory obviously um, you can look zoom into your waves um, you can look at a wms inventory report for example So uh, if I want to zoom in in my um, uh, if, if in the in the uh, uh, NetSuite UI, if you want to look at bin inventory, um, you need to create a safe search to pull all the information out. With WMS, um, you have standard reports available um, to show you that kind of information. So if I type in the item or select the item and the location, I have a really good overview of what's it, what's what my uh, uh, what, how much inventory I have for this particular item and where it's located, all the bin locations, the units, um, the quantities on hand, the quantity available, uh, and their inventory statuses. So if you um, work with quality control and you, you quarantine items when they come in, um, you'll see the um, relevant inventory statuses here as well. So that's, um, um, that's the, the wrap up for me. Um, I hope it was uh, was useful, and you get a bit of a, um, an, an feeling of, uh, of what WMS does, uh, and especially the new functionalities which which were uh, delivered uh, or released in a new version. So well, thank you very much for your um, for your attendance. Let me look my presentation again. Um, if you're interested uh, in any of the demonstrated features uh, or WMS in general, so if you would like uh, another demo or a more um, generic demo for the full uh, WMS functionality, feel free to reach out to me. Um, that's my email address.